this evening, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I do thank our brother George very much for his kind words of welcome. It's a joy to be with you, and we do look to the Lord to bless our meeting this evening. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm just going to read one verse. We'll be referring to a few other uh, scriptures um, from the passage. Do keep your Bibles open. Uh, Isaiah 1 verse 18 be a well-known scripture. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Isaiah 1 verse 18. And God speaks through the prophet. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wood. Amen. Let's just bow in a moment's prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministry and song this evening. Thank you, Lord, for many here tonight who can honestly say it is well. It is well with my soul. Indeed, thy word reminds us, what shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and loses his own soul? And so, Lord, that's the most important thing for anyone to consider tonight. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for thy word. And Lord, as we come now to the proclamation of the gospel, we pray for help. We pray, Lord, you'll grant understanding. We pray for that infilling and liberty and power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray that you will speak into hearts this evening. Hide the preacher behind the cross. We want no one to be seen save Jesus only. For it's in through his precious name we pray. Amen. I'm sure one of the things that fishermen fear most of all is a severe weather warning. And I'm sure most sailors would take heed when there's a warning about a coming storm or something that could indeed put their lives at risk. And it seems lately there's been nothing, only storms. Uh, and I know it's only in our head, but I think it's got worse from the started to name them. And it started off a few months ago with Storm Abigail. Now, my daughter's called Abigail, and I said she was the start of all the trouble. Uh, and from that, we've had Barney, we've had Clodagh, we've had Desmond, we've had Eva, uh, we had Frank. I was sure Storm George was coming next, but thank the Lord we were delivered from Storm George and Storm Gertrude come uh, in place of George. The, the storm that was last present was the storm Jake. Uh, if you want to know, Katie's coming next. If you're Katie tonight, well, you're on the way. Uh, and it'll all end uh, sometime in the future with Storm Wendy. And then they're going to start over again with another A. This time, no doubt, it'll be a man's name. Only a fool would ignore a severe weather warning. As I read down through Isaiah chapter 1, there's a, there's a bleak forecast here. There's a bleak outlook here given by the Lord. As he looks down upon mankind, and he's, this is written uh, nearly 3,000 years ago, uh, and it's a picture of where man was in those days, the days of Isaiah the prophet. And as God looks down, he gives us a, a different little picture, uh, and he looks in different scenes to describe the condition of men in those days, men, women, and indeed young people. As I thought about the, the bleak outlook, I First of all, in verse 2, he, he looks into families, and this is what he said, Hear, O heavens, give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. As he looks into families, he uses a family as a description, and he says they're, they're like rebellious children. And I'm sure tonight there are parents here who know something of rebellious children. And maybe tonight there's parents here, and your heart's broken tonight. They used to come to the meetings, and there used to be little ones with you, and they were knee high. And they would have been here, they'd have been up at the front taking part in Sunday school and youth events, and tonight they're far, far away from the Lord. And I'm sure your heart's breaking tonight. Well, God knows all about it. And God recognizes your pain, and God understands where you're coming from tonight. The Lord looked down upon mankind. He said, they're, they're like rebellious children. Maybe you are one of those rebellious children tonight. Mom saved, Dad saved. But thus far, you've turned your back on the Lord. And maybe you've got away from the Lord as far away as you can get, but thank God you're in the meeting this evening, and the Lord wants to speak to you tonight. You're just like one, one of those rebellious children, and God knows all about you tonight. 
And that's what the Lord says that the people were like. They were like rebellious children. Maybe there was a time when you had a, a, an interest in the gospel and you've rebelled against it. Maybe you've never had an interest and you've turned your back on the Lord. He looks into families. Then he looks into the farm in verse number 3. And again, he's using little pictures to describe the condition of man. He says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know my people, doth not consider. If you're ever traveling along the road, and you, you see the farmer going to the gates, and you'll see all the animals gathering around the gate. They know it's feeding time. Uh, and whether it's sheep or cows, they'll, they'll come to the gate uh, and they're looking for some nourishment. They have the sense to know here's someone coming to do them good. Here's someone coming uh, and he's got something for them which will help them. God wants to bless you tonight. The Lord wants to save you tonight. The Lord wants to rescue you tonight. The Lord wants to deal with your sin problem tonight. But look what he says in verse 3. The ox knoweth his aster and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know my people doth not consider. They were thankless people. God had been there for them and wanted to provide for them and wanted to meet their need and wanted to meet the greatest need of all, but they had no interest. And you know, the brute beast has more sense. And that's what the Lord's saying. The, the ass has more sense. The ox has more sense than you tonight if you don't know Christ. As the Lord looks upon you tonight, He's offering you something wonderful, something free, something forever, and as yet you've refused. And this is what it was like in Isaiah's day. As he looks into the family, he says, you're like rebellious children. As he looks into the farm, just like the, the animals, they have more sense, they appreciate the, the, the owner as provision, and they accept it willingly, but you don't. And then he looks at our frame, he looks at our bodies. In verses 5 and 6, he, he paints a, a bleak picture here uh, as he thinks about the bodily condition of someone. He says, why should we be stricken any more? Verse 5, ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, but they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Some of the words he uses, stricken, sick, faint, wounded, bruised, sore, untreated, just festering. As the Lord looks upon the people in those days, he says, you're sick. They may have been physically well. They may have felt as fit as a fiddle. But God was looking below the surface, and He looked right into the heart, and He says, you're sick. And let me say tonight, you're sick with sin if you've never been to Calvary. If you've never been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you're sick tonight. And this is the, the bleak outlook that God sees as He looks upon the people in Isaiah's day, but He could be looking upon you tonight. And He says, you're like a rebellious child tonight. You know all about the gospel, but you've turned your back on it. You're, you're unlike the ox and the ass who, who all recognize the master's goodness and receive willingly from his hand what he offers to them. You've refused what the Lord has offered you this evening, and the ox and the ass, well, let's put it simply, they have more sense than you this evening. And maybe you're thinking, well, I feel healthy tonight, and maybe you are. But of course, the Lord's not talking about your physical condition. He said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. You're sick with sin tonight. And that sin must be dealt with tonight. If you're ever going to know God's goodness and God's great salvation. The Lord not only looked at the family and he looked at the farm and he looked at their frame, but he looked at something federal. He looked at the nation as a whole. In verse 4, he says, Ah, sinful nation. Verse 7, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. It is desolate as overthrown by strangers. He uses the word sinful, iniquity, corruptors, forsaken the Lord, provoking the Holy One to anger, gone away backwards, desolate. What a picture the Lord is painting as He looks upon this people. As He looks into their heart, He says, you're, you're like a rebellious child. As he looks into the farm, he says, you're, you're unlike the animals which have more sense. As he looks into their frame, he says, you're sick with sin. As he looks at it nationally, he says, you have forsaken the Lord. And then he looks at their folly. It wasn't that they weren't religious. It wasn't that they didn't have, if I can use a modern-day term, a church connection or a church interest. 
Look at verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations or offerings. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting. Verse 15. And when you spread forth your hands, I'll hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make men any prayers I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. He, he was sick to the teeth of religion. That's all they had. They went through the religious activities. They had, they had signed the book. They had, they had done whatever had to be done. Followed all the rituals. Offered all the sacrifices. Uh, went through even to the last mile, whatever we've asked of them. And God says, I'm sick to the teeth of it. Even your prayers have no interest. You see the picture that the Lord is painting of the people this evening. What a bleak outlook tonight. What a desperate forecast as he looks upon them and sees their spiritual condition tonight. And maybe that's where you are tonight. They were rebellious. They were thankless. They were careless. But yes, they were religious. But as yet, they didn't know the Lord. Is that where we find you tonight? Out of Christ without a Savior, with no hope nor refuge now. What a bleak outlook tonight. But you know, then we find this blessed oasis in this chapter this evening. That would be an awful thing if that's where we were to finish the meeting this evening. We could ask the question, has God forsaken them? Has God abandoned them? Has God forgotten about them? Has God given up on them? Has God so fed up, He has just cast them to the one side? Then we come to verse 18. What a blessed oasis. What a, what a glimmer of hope. What a, what a shaft of light in such a dark situation. And maybe tonight, as God has spoken to you about your sinfulness and your need to be born again, the need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, as God warns you about your sin tonight, then we come to verse 18, and the Lord says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I, I love this verse of Scripture. I love the simplicity. He says, come, come. What an invitation. Uh, I often think of a, of a little child, just when they're, even before they can walk, even when they're crawling, if you get down on your knees and hold out your arms and say, come, the little one will understand what you mean, and you'll see the, the child try and scrape its way and crawl its way and make its way over to where you are. A, a little one understands the word come. It's so simple. The Lord says to you tonight, come. Who's he inviting to come tonight? Well, we've already read the passage together. He's inviting the rebellious sinner tonight. That's those who know the gospel, understand the gospel, but you know, you've rebelled against the gospel. You have a full understanding of, of your sinful condition. You have a full understanding of what Christ has accomplished at Calvary. You know tonight that there's cleansing available for you in the precious blood, but you have rebelled against the gospel, and you've walked away from the gospel. And the Lord says to you tonight, come. What a gracious, loving, merciful Savior we have tonight. Not only the rebellious sinner, but the ignorant sinner. Did you notice what it says in verse 3? The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know. And maybe tonight you didn't know. Maybe tonight you weren't aware. Maybe tonight you thought, my church is all I need. I have went through all the rituals. I, I know all the rules. I'm, I'm a good living person. I do the best I can. I'm a good neighbor. I'm honest. I'm upright. I'm not a lawbreaker as far as I'm aware. I'm in no trouble with the police. I haven't got a criminal record. And if you were to look upon me, I'm a decent, upright citizen of Kilkeel. And you didn't know tonight you were a sinner. You weren't aware tonight that you were lost and without hope tonight. Because all our righteousnesses, all the good things we can do in the sight of God are just filthy rags, Isaiah tells us. You need something more than your works this evening. You need Christ tonight. And you need the cleansing of the precious blood this evening. And the Lord's inviting you to come tonight. The rebellious sinner can come tonight. You know, the ignorant sinner can come tonight. Those who weren't aware of their condition, God is inviting you to come tonight. You see verse 4, it says, A people laden with iniquity, the burdened sinner can come tonight. And maybe God has been speaking to you. Maybe you've heard the gospel here. Maybe you've heard it somewhere else. 
Maybe you've read a gospel tract. Maybe as you've been pondering these things, there's not another person in the meeting aware of where you are spiritually tonight. And they maybe thought you come in tonight, you're disinterested, you have no interest at all, but they don't know what's going through your heart, what's going through your mind tonight. They don't realize the battle that you're in tonight, and you're a burdened sinner tonight. And God has been dealing with you very specifically and very personally, and God has been speaking to you. And tonight He says, come, come, burdened sinner. Come and have that burden lifted this evening. Burdened one, why will you longer bear? Sorrows from which He releases. Open your heart and rejoicing share life more abundant in Jesus. He's inviting you to come tonight, no matter who you are tonight. You see the simplicity tonight. Just come. But then there's urgency here. He says, come now. Come now. I, I don't know if it's the same with yourselves, but any time I write a check, I have to pinch myself to remind me that it's the year 2016. Hard to believe, isn't it? I remember all the chat about the year 2000, and it seemed so distant, seemed so far away. Now we've gone beyond that. We're beyond 2010, and we're now at 2016, and time just seems to move so quickly. And there's no limits when it comes to God's love tonight, for God so loved the world. There's no limit when it comes to His grace tonight, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. There, there's no limit to God's provision. He will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. But here's the limit this evening. There's a time limit. And the Lord says, come now. Come tonight. Because you can't even boast about tomorrow. Because no man knoweth what a day may bring forth. I, as well as living in Rough Island, I also have a home up in County Tyrone, uh, and a neighbor of ours, I could see work going on recently, and they put up, I thought it was a, a shed for, for hens. He, he had a shed for Moy Park, and some of you know what they do for Moy Park, but he put up this shed, and it was a fantastic looking building, and I thought, there's another hen house coming up, but it wasn't. It was an anaerobic, anaerobic digester, and some of you know what that is. Don't worry if you don't. And it looked a fancy building, and, and he had all ready to go. And a few weeks ago, he was up working at it, and he fell down the ladder, and he broke his neck. And he's in eternity. And the hen house is still there, the anaerobic digester is still there, but he's gone. I, no, I don't know where. I pass no judgment in the man's soul. I have no idea where he stood. Boast not thyself of tomorrow for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. This time last year, we were just waiting at the bedside of my father. I didn't get preaching on Easter Sunday. He was so ill. And a few days later, he slipped into eternity. My best friend is now sitting at his father's bedside up in the Antrim Hospital, and he's gone through the exact same thing, and it's only a matter of time that he slips into eternity. We don't know what a day brings forth. And the Lord says, come. It's so simple tonight. But there's an urgency with it tonight. Come now, the Lord says. I was over in the United States at the beginning of the year preaching. Uh, and on our way back, we, we were held up in Washington. We got to Washington Airport. Uh, and we had to get a connecting flight in New York. And when we got to Washington, uh, the plane was about half an hour late, but we were okay. And so we all got onto the plane and all the luggage and all the head luggage, and you know what it's like trying to get the bags crammed in up above, and you're trying to get in before everyone else. It's like a herd of cattle. You know what it is. And we were sitting down ready to go, and we had to get out of the plane. Apparently the plane had a flat wheel of all things. And they said it was going to take an hour to change the wheel. Now, I'm hopeless at changing a wheel. I married a young couple one time, and the girl was a right strong girl, and the fellow, he was just a beanpole. Uh, and at the, at the wedding, he made a speech. He said, the first night we were out on a date, I got a flat wheel and she changed the wheel. I knew she was the woman for me. <laughs> well, I'm exactly, I'm in that category. I, I'd be no use to changing a wheel or anything like that. Uh, but they, they, I would nearly help that time to get this plane going. I wanted to get back home. But they got the wheel fixed. We got onto the plane. We were ready to take off. They built up the engine. Next thing, boom, they cut the engines again. Pilate says, I'm sure you didn't like that sound. I was saying, you're right, I didn't like it. 
He said, we, because we were held up, we've missed our airspace. We might have to wait another hour. That's no use to me. I knew if we had to wait another hour, we would miss the connecting flight that was tight going. Anyway, he, he come on again. He says, get ready to go. Get into your seats. They found a slot, and we're going in 10 minutes. Hallelujah. Up we went into the air, over to New York, landed into New York Airport. Uh, and when we arrived, we, we should have had enough time to get the connecting flight. When we arrived, he says, listen. He says, someone has parked a plane at the gate, and we can't get into the gate. I said it must have been a woman pilot. My wife wasn't too pleased at that. Anyway, somebody had parked the plane in front of the gate, and we couldn't get into the gate until this plane was moved. Uh, uh, and he said 10 or 15 minutes, but of course that was half an hour. And so we got off the plane eventually, uh, and we ran to the Aer Lingus uh, check-in desk to try and get the flight uh, back to Dublin. Uh, and when we arrived, the plane was on the runway, but the gate was closed. It says, you're not getting on that plane because you're too late. And no matter how much we pleaded, no matter how many sad stories we had, you're not getting on that plane. And let me say tonight, the Lord's offering you a full and a free and a forever salvation. And the only limit tonight is a time limit. You don't know how long you've got. And the Lord says to you tonight, come now. Come this very moment. Come this very night. He says, come now and let us reason together. Come and face me like a man. That's what he's saying. See that word reason? It's a, it's a legal term. You see, you have broken God's law tonight, just like I had broken God's law. And legally, in the sight of God, you're a guilty sinner tonight. And when the Lord says, come, let us reason together, he says, let's settle this matter out of court. That's what the Lord's saying. And I've known some people, and they were keen to get into court, but when they had a day in court, they weren't that keen to go back. I knew someone recently, he was charged with something. He was up in Newry Courthouse, and he said that uh, when the barrister was questioning him, he said his heart was beating so loud uh, that the blood was coming up to his ears. He says, by the end of it, I, I couldn't hear a word the man was saying. I was so terrified, I would have pleaded guilty to anything. Can you imagine standing before the great white throne and facing the Lord Jesus Christ? Stephen Fry, a number of months ago, said, if I have to stand before God, I, I am, I'm going to ask him some questions. Listen, Stephen Fry, you'll not have a word to say. You'll not have a word to say. And I don't care how big you are tonight, you'll not have a word to say to God. And when you stand and face the Lord Jesus Christ, there's going to be no big people there, no small people there. And I tell you, you're just going to have to face him like a man. And you're going to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. That's why he says tonight, come now, let us reason together. Man up tonight. Come and face the reality tonight that you're a sinner. And come and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior this evening. See this wonderful invitation? Uh, you see the, the simplicity come. You see the urgency now. You see the parley come and let us reason together. You see the divinity come and let us reason together. Saith the Lord, it's the Lord's inviting you tonight. It's not me. It's not the Baptist church tonight. It's the Lord that's inviting you tonight. When you think of that this evening, that you're a sinner, and yet the Lord of glory, the sinless, spotless, crimeless, harmless Son of the living God is inviting you to come and to sort the matter out tonight. And he's willing tonight. He's willing to meet with you and he's willing to deal with the problem tonight. You see the reality. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson. He talks about your sins. It's personal tonight. And he says, your sins are like scarlet. They're like crimson tonight. And they would take a, a little shellfish or perhaps a little insect and the insect would be crushed. And they would take the dye out of the insect and they would use the dye uh, to, to dye the woolen garments. Uh, and the ink was so, uh, the dye was so strong that once you dyed a garment, it was indelible. It could never be removed. It could never by human means be taken out of that garment. And the Lord says, that's what your sin's like tonight. You're a deep dyed sinner this evening. And there's nothing you can do to get that sin out of that garment. And you know, just like the, the little shellfish would be crushed to make the dye, sin brings pain. 
The way of the transgressor is hard. Listen, it's a hard life being a sinner, but I'll tell you, it's a worse death, and it's an awful eternity. To be lost in hell for all eternity. How can we imagine what that would be like? You remember 9-11 when they had a choice to burn or jump? Uh, and I remember being in New York, and it was up in the, uh, the top of the, the Empire State Building. Uh, and when you look down, you, you can't really see the bottom. It's so far down. And the World Trade Tower was higher than the Empire State Building. And people at the top of the, uh, of the World Trade Tower had a choice to stay and burn or to jump, and they picked to jump because they didn't want to burn. What must it be like to be burning in hell for all eternity? Because that's what the Bible says lies ahead for those who die without Christ. And you're a deep dyed sinner this evening. That's the reality. But here's the wonderful possibility. Come now, let us reason together. I'll talk about it. The Lord wants to meet you this evening, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, yes, you're a sinner tonight, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You can be as white as snow this evening. Uh, again, when I was in the States, we, we just arrived when Storm Jonas hit, and, and the whole place was covered in snow. We were stuck in Washington for two or three days, and when you looked out, the cars were covered in snow. Everywhere you looked was just pure white. It's as if nothing had been there before. That's what the Lord does with your sin. He takes it away. It's just as if you'd never sinned. He says it'll be as wool. Wool that has never been dyed. That stain will be removed. And it'll just be as if it never died. Never has been dyed. And it's the same with, with your sin-sick soul. It'll be just as if you've never sinned. That's what justified is just as if I'd never sinned. Justification, liberation, purification, salvation. How? Because the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. The Lord can deal with the sin tonight. That stain of sin can be removed and removed forever. You know, there's another couple of little pictures when you think of the snow. Uh, a few Friday mornings ago, I was out visiting on the Thursday night, uh, outside Raphael, near Anahinchico, where we had the mission. George knows where that's at. And the snow come on. Uh, and I got home to Raphael, and you know it's all hills in Raphael, uh, and got into the house uh, about two in the morning. Uh, and there was a couple of inches of snow. When I got up in the morning, there was a good four inches. The ground was well covered in snow. And that was a Friday morning. See, when I came back on the Saturday, th there wasn't a trace of snow. It was gone. It had melted. See, when the Lord takes away your sins, there's not a trace. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us, not for most of the sin, but all of the sin tonight. I, I haven't been at Belmore's show for a couple of years, but I used to watch the sheep shears uh, and how they would get the thing and just skin around the sheep, and, and it just seemed to fall off. Now, I know there's more to it than that. But there's one thing you couldn't do. You couldn't put the wool back in the sheep. You see, when the Lord takes your sin away, it's gone. As far as the east is from the west, so far as He removed our transgressions from us. That's what the Lord can do for you tonight. He can remove that sin and make you ready for heaven and ready for home. You see the bleak outlook tonight? It's a bad picture, isn't it? We're all sinners in the sight of a holy God. Here's the blessed oasis He's inviting you to come tonight. And He says, I'm going to take that sin away tonight and I'll leave you as white as snow. I'm going to take that sin away, and it'll be as wool tonight, as if it never had been dyed. The stain of sin will be gone, and you'll be ready for heaven and ready for home. See the bleak outlook? You see the blessed oasis? Let me finish very, very quickly with the blown opportunity. Because if you look in the reading in verse number 20, here's a possibility tonight, a sad possibility. Remember, the Lord has painted the sad picture of where they are. He has given out this glorious invitation. But look at verse number 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. It's hard to believe, but there will be some who hear the wonderful invitation from a gracious, loving, merciful Savior, inviting you to come tonight just as you are. 
and there'll be some who'll refuse and there'll be some who'll say no and the Lord says you're going to have to face the consequences of a lost sinner's hell thank God it doesn't have to be like that tonight thank God tonight you don't need to refuse the invitation you can accept the invitation and you can be saved by his matchless grace tonight I think it was last year, Lewis Hamilton, the Formula One world champion, received a royal invitation to go to the royal box for the Wimbledon final, the men's final at Wimbledon. He, he posted a, a picture on Instagram. I don't have Instagram or anything like that. I'm sure you'll know more about it than me. He posted this picture on Instagram, and he had the invitation. He says, looking forward to spending the afternoon in the royal box watching the tennis. And so he got himself out of the house, made his way over to Wimbledon, and when he reached the royal box, he says, you're not getting in. You're not getting in. But I'm Lewis Hamilton. I'm Formula One world champion. You're not getting in. I have enough money in the bank I could buy Wimbledon. You're not getting in. And he was refused entry because he didn't wear the right dress coat. He'd just come the way he was. And he hadn't the right garments on. And they says, you're not getting in. Let me say this tonight. The Bible says that in Isaiah 64, verse 6, that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And tonight you're in filthy rags, spiritually speaking. But Isaiah also talks in 61, verse 10, about the garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness. And see, when you trust Christ... He, he takes the rags of our sin and he gives us the garment of salvation. And when you've got the garment of salvation on, when you've got his robe of righteousness, when God looks upon you, he doesn't see your sin, he sees his son's righteousness. And that means you're accepted by God and one day you'll be in heaven. And you've got a royal invitation tonight. But if you turn up still in the rags, you're not going to get into God's heaven. But he's offering you tonight a robe of righteousness, which he purchased when he took your sin in his own body on the tree at Calvary. Lewis Hamilton fully intended to be in the royal box, but he didn't make it. And I have no doubt everyone here intends to be in heaven. But there is that possibility that you might not make it. And so the Lord says, come now and let us reason together. Will you come to him tonight? Let's just bow in a moment's prayer. Could I say to you tonight, as God has been speaking and God's people are praying, if the Lord has been speaking to your heart tonight, Maybe tonight you are that rebellious child. God has spoken, spoken very specifically to you tonight. Maybe tonight you're that burdened sinner. And God has been speaking to you tonight. Maybe you're the rebellious sinner. You know the gospel. You could preach the gospel, but you're still not saved. And God's been speaking to you tonight. As we mingle around a little later on, if I can help you or Pastor George can help you, Please settle the matter tonight. Tomorrow may be too late. You'll never have a better opportunity to trust Christ than now. There'll never be a better time for you to get saved than to get saved tonight. It'll be no easier tomorrow. And now is the accepted time. If we can help, we would love to help you. But settle the matter and settle it tonight. And then you can sing with our friends. It is well. It is well with my soul. Heavenly Father, we thank you for thy word. We thank you for the truth of the gospel. And Lord, we pray that as man's voice goes silent, as the singing has ceased, Lord, that you'll speak into hearts this evening and draw those who are out of Christ into that relationship that they might be in Christ. Lord, that they might have on them that robe of righteousness which means they are accepted in the beloved. And one day they'll have that glorious entry 
into a glorious heaven above. Bless thy word to our hearts and save precious souls, for we ask it in our Savior's precious name. Amen. Let's sing in closing number 